Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and it is time for another video update about my mini electric pickup truck that I bought from China. Now if you guys didn't see my first video, I'll put a link to it up here. But basically I bought this thing, had it shipped from China, did a whole unboxing. That video actually got over 6 million views. It went like crazy viral. I don't know how that happened, but thank you guys for watching it. For a brief summary, I paid $2,000 as the base price for the truck. Then I put another $1,000 or so into it for the battery pack and then another 500 bucks for the air conditioning and the dumping bed in the back because I wanted that nice hydraulic dump. And now because there were so many comments under that video asking questions about it, I want to do another video updating you guys on everything that's happened with it and answer a lot of the frequently asked questions. Now one of the biggest comments was just that people thought it was going to fall apart and that it was a piece of junk. I'm sorry to disappoint those of you who thought that, but the truck has actually held up incredibly well. It's now about three and a half months after that first video and literally nothing has broken on it. It is working great. I mean, as I go around the truck, like even the few little rust spots that were there when I bought it, I mean, the rust hasn't really progressed. Uh, the suspension is still not great, but that was really the only sort of issue with it is that it's really bumpy off-road. Otherwise, it's held up incredibly well. All the weather seals are still watertight. All the lights work. The uh, hydraulic dump bed in the back works. Uh, the seat belt, everything. I mean, the infotainment system on the inside. Everything is working great, which, to be honest, has kind of surprised me because I also was a little worried about what the longevity was going to be. But so far, everything has been holding up really well. I've also already made some changes. Like, one of the really common comments on the last video was about how the uh, low gear lever here on the inside wouldn't let the door close. A lot of people had different ideas of how to fix that. Some people said to open the bolt and just twist it backwards about 90 degrees. That seems to be the best answer and was actually what I was planning on doing. So I went ahead and did that. And now the low gear lever is further back and it allows the door to close even when it's in low gear. One of the commenters said they didn't think that the truck could tow a bike. I don't know if they meant towing or hauling, but we're gonna see if we can get my uh, Himoe Escape electric bike in the back here. All right, got a bit of a ramp here. Here's a neat little trick, by the way. On almost any electric bike, the Himoy Escape included, if you hold the down button for the pedal assist, it'll usually do the walk assist. So it just walks it forward at like two miles an hour. Useful for these kinds of situations. Oh, is it gonna fit? Oh yeah, like a glove, it just barely fits there. Let's tie this baby down. All right, and there we have it. One bike in the Changli. Who said the truck couldn't tow a bike, huh? Now I know that was technically hauling, not towing, so I guess now I have to try and give it a tow. All right, Dad, hit it. And while we're already hauling things, I guess I should try and pull the cyber quad up into here and see how that goes. All right, let's hit it. <laughs> now, while I have the cyber quad in here, this is gonna be a good chance to test the lift capacity of the bed. Now, a lot of people ask me, what is the capacity? And to be honest, I have no idea, uh, but I guess we'll find out here. This is about 150 pounds. I'm another 150 and a bit. So uh, let's see if it can even start to lift up with both of us in here. All right, hit it, Dad. Yeah, it's working. Man, I had like no, no trouble at all with that, huh? You wanna try going a little higher? Okay, yeah, try going a little higher. Yeah, that's doing it with no problems. 
Nice thing is with weight in it, it lowers really easily. It's when it's empty that it has problems lowering. All right, well, at least 300 pounds is the capacity of the hydraulic lift. Now, someone else commented that they wanted to see a tug of war between a man and the truck. While I was pretty sure that the truck was gonna be able to tow the bike, this one, I'm not sure, honestly, who's gonna win here. So, uh, Dad, are you ready for the tug of war? Yep. All right, three, two, one, pull. <laughs> All right. Pull. <laughs> uh, I think that pretty much decides it. Yeah, I was not gonna win that one. So my dad has actually probably put more miles on the truck than I have. You might remember him from that uh, solar powered kayak video a few months back. But uh, dad, I wanted to ask you how the truck's been holding up and what you've noticed over the last few months of driving it. Yeah, well, thanks, and it's always good to have you back home, <laughs> and I want to thank you for letting us have the truck. Uh, it has been surprisingly good. Um, I think you and I and, and millions of your viewers had some concerns about how this thing was going to hold up, and I will tell you that I have not babied it. I've driven it over some rutted uh, uh, pasture. It's been out in the rain. Um, it's been all over the place, squeezing between trees, and it has held up extremely well. Um, nothing has broken on it. The rust has been just slightly worse than what I think you showed when it came, you know, packed in that huge crate. But it's been fantastic. The panels are actually pretty straight, and the fitment of the doors and stuff is, is actually quite good. I mean, I'm really kind of pleased with it. One of the comments I saw a lot were people making fun of the way the doors sound when you close it. That one I don't really get. I mean, that's, that's what a door sounds like. I mean, if you've ever driven an old car, it sounds like a metal door closing. Some of y'all been driving plastic cars your whole life and it shows. The tailgate also, I mean, it's got a solid sound to it. I mean, the truck's built out of metal. This is what metal sounds like. I gotta say, I can't believe how well the interior is holding up as well. I mean, this is obviously some cheap upholstery, but it's gotten a lot of use here on my parents' property. It's basically like a, you know, little utility vehicle or a work truck here, and it's holding up very nicely. Needs a bit of a cleaning, but I mean, the thing seems solid. Like for the price that you pay, you get a pretty well-made little truck here. Besides it being dirty, everything looks great. The uh, infotainment system there, still working great. Uh, the lights, the dashboard, everything, the steering wheel, nothing's falling apart here. The windshield wipers still work great. I mean, everything is just, it's all perfect here. It's cheap, but it's, it's working great. One kind of funny note though, is that the uh, rear view mirror here, it's just held on with a suction cup. And every three weeks or so, it just falls off and you got to kind of stick it back up there again. But, you know, other than that, that's probably the one thing that keeps falling apart here is the uh, rear view mirror keeps falling off. The door pockets here are holding up great. The uh, electric windows actually go down quite fast. The door handles are all good. The door locks. The handles from the outside. I mean, everything's just holding up. The air conditioning is still working great. It's a little loud. If anything, here in Florida, it's been cold the last few days. So turning on the heater might be kind of nice. It's like surprisingly good. I, I just keep being surprised by it. Yeah, and you know, you put it through some torture tests here over the last few days. And uh, you know, I mean, I think that speaks for itself. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that it was able to pull on on flat ground, uh, you know, uh, my van that, that weighs about 3,600 pounds. And, you know, we dropped it in the low and, and it just pulled it. I mean, it was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, have you been using the um, low gear, high gear selector much? I've used it a couple of times. Um, we're real flat here. <laughs> I kind of tested it. One thing I realized is that when, you know, we were uncrating this thing, 
and we were having trouble driving it off of the, the steel because the steel had gotten bent by a forklift or something in the, in the transportation halfway around the world. Uh, if we had dropped it into low gear, which we weren't aware of at that moment in time, I think it would have climbed out over that thing. I, I have been impressed. We do have one sort of mounded pile of dirt here, and I've driven it up that and dropped it in the low gear and at, at walking speed it just climbed right up. So the low gear is very powerful and I think that would have just saved us about 90 minutes of sweating and, and marginal language uh, in terms of being able to get it out of the crate. Now there are a lot of updates that I want to do to the truck. There are some things that I can do to make it just a little bit nicer. One of the big things that I'm excited to do is put a solar panel on the top here. I think just going right on top of the sunroof, I can put like a 30, 40, 50 ish watt solar panel and it's going to make it so it can just trickle charge each time it's parked outside. You know, you don't need that much power. The actual wall charger, it's like, uh, I want to say thousand watts or so. It's a high power charger and that charges pretty quickly. But if it's going to be parked outside all day, you might as well just get like a slow trickle charge. And if you're only doing a few miles a day, you can basically always keep it topped up from the sun and you might never need to plug it into the wall. Several people were curious how I charged the truck and it's pretty simple. I mean, it charges like an electric bicycle or an electric scooter or skateboard if you have any of those. Basically, you just have a big wall charger here. This runs off of 110 or if you're in Europe somewhere, they'd give you a 220 version of these. You just plug it into the wall or an extension cord like I do and the other end goes into the truck. Now, I will say there's something a bit weird about this charger is that the order is important. I found that I have to first plug it into the truck and then I can plug it into the extension cord or the wall. For some reason, it doesn't work any other way. So first I go truck and then extension cord. I find that I don't have to charge it that often though. Pretty much uh, once a week at the maximum and I think we often let it go, you know, a couple of weeks because it's got a really big battery. It's 6,000 watt hours and we're just not going that far, you know, it's staying on the property. So the battery lasts a really long time. That's another reason I think that adding some solar panels up here would be a great way to just trickle charge it. Now I have experimented with some solar charging using a uh, power station from Jackery and some of those solar panels that they have. And that's kind of a neat way to do a uh, quick and dirty solar charging. It's not the cheapest solution, but it gets the job done. And if you're out in the field, you could definitely solar recharge that way without having to install anything on the truck. I wonder if I can Dukes of Hazard this. I think it looks cooler when they do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it to the professionals. I also want to add a uh, ham radio or a CB radio in here uh, on the dash. I don't have my technician's license yet. I'm going to get it. I'll make sure I do that before I actually broadcast. But I think that'd just be a fun thing to add in there. I'm also thinking of putting some type of bed liner in here just to make it last a little longer. You know, we use the truck for a lot of just around the property jobs, throwing stuff in the back all the time. And, you know, when you throw a bunch of two buys, rakes, shovels and stuff in there, I don't want it getting too beaten up too quickly. So some type of bed liner might be nice. I noticed some people in the comments said I should just bedline the entire thing and maybe that'd be a fun thing to do. So one thing I didn't get to show last time was just how bright the lights are at night. Dad, why don't you try turning them on? So even just the headlights are bright, but then the spots up here, I mean, it really lights up the night.
Some people had an issue with me calling this my $2,000 truck. Now, yes, the base price of the truck was $2,000 to the Chinese factory, but then on top of that, I had to pay another $1,000 for the 60 volt, 100 amp hour lithium battery. And then I paid another $500 or so for both the um, AC and the hydraulic dumping bed together. So the cost of the truck itself and all of the components was about $3,500. Then on top of that was all the shipping and the taxes and the duties and the delivery charges and all that stuff. So have you had it out in the rain at all? Has it gotten rained on? Yeah, it's gotten rained on. I mean, I haven't left it out in the torrential driving South Florida rains. You know, it, it'll rain sideways here at, at 70 miles an hour. So I'm not going to leave it out in that, but I've left it out in, in the rain. And I did it in part to see, you know, how good were the seals of the windows and the seals of the moonroof and all that. And not one drop of water inside. All the electronics are completely stable and functional, so it's rain worthy. Nice, and have you been using the uh, dump bed in the back much? The dump bed is great and uh, has really saved me having, uh, you know, to pick up a bunch of stuff and whatever. Uh, I, I use it for the trash run every week and I've used it uh, uh, when your mom and I go around uh, our, our place here, you know, picking up uh, debris that's fallen from the trees or you know just picking up some stuff here we've got a, a brush pile that we burn every now and again and it's just real nice to be able to flick the switch and have the dump bed uh, just drop the stuff right out I also like the fact that it is small size you know so your mom enjoys driving it and it's not like she's driving this huge truck that she's you know worried about seeing over the fenders and seeing you know over to the side and you know looking over the back of a long bed so you know it, this isn't going to fit the needs of everybody that that's <laughs> not the point but for us in this kind of environment this is just perfect A lot of people ask, why didn't I just get a cheap gas truck? You know, like if I'm gonna spend several thousand dollars on this, why not just get a cheap used truck off of Craigslist? And the answer is that I don't want a cheap old gas truck that's gonna start needing tons of maintenance. You know, a clutch goes out on one of those things, it's gonna be a thousand dollars to fix it. You know, the engine goes out, it's basically totaled. With this, I mean, there's nothing really to maintain. Like, it's one little electric motor, there's no transmission, there's no moving parts in an engine, there's no radiator, there is an AC, which, to be honest, if that breaks at some point, is not gonna be terrible. There's fans in the sunroof. There are no spark plugs to foul. There's no oil to change. There's just really nothing to do to maintain it, so it's just such a nicer vehicle to own and use. Obviously, I can't take it on highways. I can't even take it on public roads, really, because it's not street legal, but it's not meant for that, you know? It's meant for using around the property here at my parents' ranch, and it's great for that purpose. What kind of comments have you been getting from the neighbors with this thing? Yeah, well, first of all, we don't have a lot of neighbors, but I will <laughs> tell you that, that everybody just loves this thing. And when they see me or your mom out in it, um, they always honk and, and wave. And, you know, people have just, uh, they're amazed. Uh, for people who haven't seen it yet, I usually do the wait, I've got one more thing to show you, and I hit the switch and the bed lifts up and they are just totally flabbergasted. It brings a smile to everybody's face. I mean, it, it just has that effect. And so one just real quick funny story. So, you know, we have a very long private driveway here we share with two other people. So that's where I take the trash out, you know, every week. And I'm up there and I've got the dump bed raised up and it's real early in the morning and there's nobody on this little road anyway. But there's a car coming 
and I see it begin to slow down, you know, as it gets towards me, and I'm like, okay, what, what is this? And then it's close enough, and I see that there are two women in the front seat, and the passenger is uh, dropping the passenger side window, and I'm like, okay, this is going to be good. <laughs> and they don't stop, but they just slow down, and as they get right in front of me, the woman on the passenger side yells out, love that truck! <laughs> they just you know, sped up and kept going. So that is the reaction that people have. You know, it's like, what is it? How does it work? And I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, it seems like every time I show people the truck, it's just, there's this giant grin on their face. It's just, it's fun and it's funny. Those are like the two, two takeaways. Well, exactly. And, you know, I, I just want to say, I, you know, you took a little bit of a risk on this and, and I appreciate that. But, uh, and, uh, you know, we'll see what it looks like in another, you know, three months, six months, a year, whatever. But the, the, the 90 or 100 day prognosis on this thing is, uh, is nothing but positive. Now, I do have a request of you. These wheels and tires are very small. <laughs> And I would love to see if we can't get a larger wheel and tire combination because um, in the worst rutted places, you know, th this thing's hopping around pretty good. And I don't want to let air out of the tires too much. Um, that might help, but it's not really how I want to solve it. There's not a lot of air to let out either. Well, there's not a, a lot of air to let out. Although I will tell you, I've checked the air pressure and the tires and the wheels are seated perfectly. This has not lost, you know, one pound of pressure, which is, the, and, and the valve stem, you know, oftentimes those will, you know, leak or whatever. I mean, again, all the little things that, you know, you could potentially have an issue with, there's, there's been no issue. But uh, yeah, if you could see your way to finding the proper larger wheel and tire combination, um, that would probably save my back teeth uh, <laughs> on the worst part of our property here. Yeah, I'll look for some uh, nicer wheel and tire upgrades. That's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one other thing. Um, some people had commented about the moonroof is the wrong way around. Yeah. I, I don't think that's the case. This is a low speed vehicle and I've opened it just to get some breeze in and whatever, and I think it makes sense for it to open the way that it opens on a low-speed vehicle because it, it sort of forces the air in. Yeah, it's like ram air cooling, basically. It's ram air cooling, and the AC <laughs> works, and I've had the um, defroster thing going. That works. The wiper, it doesn't wipe the biggest, you know, sort of area, but it, it's, you know, it's not like I'm going to run into a semi truck going the other direction, you know, because we're not out on the road. So I just have to make sure I don't, you know, like bump into a tree or something. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I get the fact that the wiper is relatively small and there's one wiper and, you know, you just deal with it. It does clean off the water. It just cleans off the water in a relatively small arc. <laughs> One other thing that a lot of people caught was the fact that I almost crashed my drone into some power lines while filming the truck driving. Now I was aware, of course, there were power lines all along the side of the road. I did not notice the two lines running across the road and I definitely threaded the needle right between two of them on accident. That was definitely my fault and just goes to show you should always know what's in the area you're flying in. I got pretty darn lucky that day, but it could have ended a lot worse for that drone. Another common question for some reason was where did I get my hat? Uh, it's a Tilly made in Canada. I really like it. I'll put an affiliate link below if someone wants to check it out. It's made out of hemp if that does it for anybody. A lot of people were talking about which vehicles they ripped off when they designed this in China. I think that the front end is very obviously a Chevy Silverado. I don't really know how they get away with that. I mean, it's not like GM's gonna go sue some small little designer in China. Obviously, they're not gonna get any money for that. Who do you even sue? There are so many factories that produce this exact model of truck. But then some people said the back end is an F-150, which I can kind of see. The uh, rotary shifter on the inside, people told me was Chrysler, which I didn't even know about. So it seems like there's a lot of pieces of this truck that they sort of ripped off from different areas. Even the lights I pointed out last time, these used to say Jeep right across the front and they just dremeled out the Jeep logo. So there's, there's a lot of uh, IP infringement on this truck. I'm not saying that's okay. Obviously that's a no-no, but 
I mean, you know, who are they gonna sue, right? They're never gonna see their money from some, you know, nameless designer somewhere in China. There was also a lot of China hate in the comments of my last video. And I'm not sure the best way to address this. I debated whether even to address it, but I'll just put it this way. There are a lot of people, you know, that are saying you should buy local, and I get that. I support that, and I try to buy local any chance I get, as local as my neighborhood when I can, because I think that's important for a lot of reasons. But when it comes to something like this, I would buy it local if I could, but there's just no one building little electric mini trucks in the US. There's no manufacturing for that. Where would I even go to get that? So I'm not gonna not buy it from China just because someone doesn't agree with the government there, which is, again, I don't wanna get too much into politics here, but the whole idea of boycotting private businesses in a country because you disagree with what their government is doing, I mean, that just seems ridiculous to me. You're not hurting the government of China by not buying something. You're hurting independent factory owners and independent manufacturers. And again, if there were independent manufacturers in the US, that made something like this, i definitely buy it. There just aren't any. We live in a global world. You buy from whoever makes good products. And in this case, the best little electric mini truck I could find happens to come from China. So that's where I bought it. And that's not even to mention the hypocrisy of everyone saying, don't buy products from China when they're typing that on their Chinese made phone or laptop. So when it came to buying a little electric mini truck, I just bought it from the best place that makes it, which is exactly what you did when you bought your cell phone. So I think that pretty much covers the major updates about the truck and answers a lot of the questions that I saw in the comments from my first video. But of course, if there's anything that I didn't answer here and you have questions, put them in the comments below and I'll try to include them in my next update. You know, I'll try to come back every few months and let you guys know how the truck is doing because as I think I've shown in this video, it's, it's holding up surprisingly well. And I know there were a lot of people that thought, you know, I wasted my money and this was a pile of junk that was going to fall apart. But I think as we've seen, not only has the truck held up incredibly well and nothing is really broken, but it's also surprisingly useful. So I'm just really happy with it. It's been a, a fun little sort of odd vehicle that everyone seems to have fallen in love with and is just a great little thing to have on the property. So I'm really happy with it. Last but not least, before we go, it's time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Starter Pack. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from my DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And let me know where to send it, and anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the winner of the giveaway at the end of my next video. And if you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. Alright, thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you next time.